in C Sharp 11, properties can now be marked as required. Let's see this in action in this 10 minute training video. Now, for most of my training, I give you an in depth perspective on technology, but sometimes you just need to get the quick answer to the question how do I use this? That's why I created the 10 minute training series. So let's dive right into the code. And here I have a console application in .NET's, uh, .NET 7 version, which will be C Sharp 11. So C Sharp 11 only works in .NET 7 beyond. There's some things that are just not capable of going backwards to .NET 6 and before. So this is a .NET 7 console application. And I create a new class and we're gonna call this person model. It's something really simple, right? And we're gonna go ahead and use the uh, file scope namespace and we're gonna make this public. Well, leave it internal, it's fine. Uh, prop string first name and prop string last name. Okay, really simple. Uh, model for our data. And because of the fact, and let's see what this is in the project, we have this nullable. And this is something new that came in in um, C Sharp 10 with .NET 6 is the ability to have nullability, which is basically says, hey, yeah, I know strings can, can be null, even though they're not marked as null, but really if you want it to be null, you should mark it as nullable, meaning put a question mark after it. But in this case, we want to ensure that every time we create a person model, we have both the first name and last name filled in. And right now it says, you know, this is non nullable, or this is potentially going to hold null because you're not initializing it. And we could solve this by creating a constructor, CTOR, and we could say uh, string first name, string last name. And then down here, we could say first name equals first name and last name equals last name. And that would, you know, make sure that that resolves this. And it says, okay, no problem. These are not nullable because your only constructor requires these first two values. Okay. And we can even have an empty constructor and we can say first name equals and then have a default value for it. Maybe. Uh, test is the default value, right? Now, this is probably not production code, but that would work as well because it now makes sure that these two are always filled in. And if we notice you comment this out, then it's going to say, hey, um, this does not assign values to both first and last name, and they're not marked as not nullable. So if we were to put question marks after here to mark them as nullable, all of a sudden this is relieved, it goes, okay, cool, we can do that. But maybe you don't want to always require a constructor like this. Maybe you want to set your, your values in a different way. So for instance, for instance, I could put up here a using statement. So using uh, required properties is the, is the using or the namespace. I could say person model P equals new and I could say first name equals Tim and last name equals Corey. I'm not using one of the, I'm not using a constructor or don't want a constructor. Okay. So I could get rid of both of these constructors and it yells at me because it says, Hey, it could be a null value, but I'm always, I want to always say, no, I'm going to instantiate with some kind of value here. So how do I have this recognize? that it's actually filling these values in every time? Or how do I require it to be? Well, the way I do that is to mark these now as required. So public required string and public required string. And then all of a sudden, now they're not yelling at me anymore saying, no, they're not getting null because something is required. And over here, this works just fine. And if I were to say, uh, person model uh, P2 equals new, like so, it goes, no, no, no. You can't do that because first name and last name are both required now. So now I have to give it a value. And I could say, well, let's come back over here. Let's do, let's do this. Let's come back over here and we're going to uncomment this, this constructor. 
Okay, so now I can pass in uh, Tim and Corey, and well, that is a problem. There's no empty constructor over here, so let's let's create a. a uh, actually, let's just do this. Let's uncomment this like so, and now that satisfies this one, but this one down here is still yelling at me and says, hey, these are required, first name and last name. And you're like, but the first name and last name are being set. Well, this is a bit of a quirk, and it's something that um, I, it's, it's not being terribly intelligent in the fact that it doesn't see the fact that we're setting first name and last name inside this constructor. And so therefore we are properly filling these in by the time the constructor is done. So what we need to do is we need to mark this as fulfilling that. And the way to do that is to say that this set required members properly sets the members, all right? And if we had a, if we were gonna call this just as a blank constructor, like so, well, that doesn't know that it's actually setting the values. So we need to also mark this as sets required members because it does set initial values for both of those. So this is a new feature that's required. Personally, I don't use constructors as much. I do use them because they're a nice tool to have in your toolbox and you should never throw tools away. So there are times when I use them, but in general, when it comes to these type of models, I typically don't have constructors. I just have the properties, in which case this works just fine by marking these as required. I love this. Now, what doesn't work real great with is mixing the two methods without using this sets required members. So if you do mix both modes where you have both required and want to use a constructor, then you need to use the sets required members to make sure it's setting all the members necessary. And if it doesn't set all the members, then that can be a little quirky, a little problematic. So that's why you need to make sure that you're setting all the members or that you're using the, um, the curly brace method to set the proper methods at construction. So both options are available to you but I really do like this required keyword. I just don't like mixing it with constructors. That's the only thing because of this right here. But otherwise, great feature. Um, personally, like I said, I would do something like this. And then, you know, the only way to set this is the first one, but that works great. All right. So now if I were to leave one off accidentally, it's going to yell at me and say, no, you can't do that. That's a design time error. And it says, no, you need to initialize this. So go ahead and initialize it. And all of a sudden we're good to go. This really makes sure that you protect your data in a, in a way that makes sense. And you don't have to have all your properties marked as required. So if I had a, a string email, okay, I don't have to mark that as required in practice. In fact, if it's not required, I should probably mark it as nullable, but that's cool. That works. I don't have to put email in here, but if I were to come back over here and say required, I shouldn't mark it as nullable then. Uh, required, well, then I need to make sure that, you know, I put it in this, this uh, construction. So we'll leave that as, as nullable. So with that, that's the, the new required for the properties in C, uh, C Sharp 11, which is .NET 7. Now, if you want the source code for this, then go ahead and use a link in the description to download it. Thanks for watching. And as always, I am Tim Corey.